really lovely to see you here this morning, this evening. Um, I need to say welcome to St. Church Upham, even though many of you are very familiar with it here. My name is Joanna, I'm the vicar here and also at Holy Trinity Widrington Village. This is usually our joint carol service at one of our churches, but this year things are different. Everything's different, isn't it? And so we're actually going to record this service, and so we'll be posting it online hopefully later when we get home. And so I also need to say welcome to everybody who might be watching online, perhaps tonight, any time after tonight once they have posted it. We are a small congregation, not a bad size for uh, what we're doing this evening. It's quality, of course, not quantity. And uh, the readers are ready. The church has been decorated minimally because of COVID. And we have a service that we trust will bring the true meaning of Christmas into your homes and also into your hearts this evening. We will hear again the message of the angels to the shepherds of the good news of Jesus' birth. We will travel in our minds, and with the help of images and carols sung by other people, we will journey to Bethlehem once again to see the amazing thing that happened over 2,000 years ago, and yet is just as re relevant today. But we begin by lighting our fourth Advent candle this week, only five more sleeps, and then we light the central one, the white one, when it's Christmas Day, because that reminds us of who we need to keep central in all of our celebrations. Jesus, the light of the world, whose story we hear tonight. And we say a prayer as we begin. Thank you, God, for Mary's dedication to you. Thank you for her willingness to allow you to work in her. Thank you for your love for the world in giving us Jesus, your Son, to be its light and Savior. Help us tonight to open our minds, hearts, and lives to your love, light, and salvation as we hear again the wonderful story of his birth at Bethlehem. Amen. Now, tonight you're not allowed to sing in church, although what you do behind your mask only God knows. But um, at home, you can sing as loud as you like or as loud as the person next to you will let you. But we have chosen videos of carols, and they're sung by a wide mix of people. We hope you like the variety. And we start as Christmas carols, Christmas carol services always do, or nearly always, with Once in Royal David City. And of course, normally a treble chorister would sing the first verse. And tonight we have a choir called Libera, absolutely gorgeous, young lads who look angelic in their outfits. And they're very normal when you see them playing and messing about just like boys would. But I think this is a beautiful start to our carol service this evening. Once in Royal David City. Once in Royal David City stood a lonely cattle shed where a mother lay to baby in all. 
beautiful. Jesus being in Beth, born in Bethlehem didn't happen just by chance. Prophecies written in the Old Testament hundreds of years before he was born pointed to God having a plan to save the world. God had tried to reveal himself to mankind, but in the end, he decided to send his son Jesus to the earth. And we hear about this in our first reading. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. So the Word became human and made his home among us. He was full of an unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. Now we hear the song, the carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Do 
second reading is taken from Luke 1, beginning at verse 26. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. It's rather peculiar not being able to sing along, isn't it? But um, the advantage of having video clips is that we can choose wherever we like to draw somebody in. And tonight, at no great expense, we have Sting. Uh, obviously, somebody from the Northeast, originally from Wall's End. And he's going to sing about, just as Elaine has read, Gabriel's message. spellings of things and I didn't say to you that the fourth candle that we lit today on our advent candle and it might not be apparent to you but it is a pink one instead of the other three purples and that's because today we remember uh, Mary particularly in those readings we actually had that reading in our church services this morning. Sue is now going to come and read for us. Thank you. The reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 and 3 to 7. At that time, the Roman emperor 
Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no lodging available for them. been a very difficult, lonely, perhaps sad, worrying year. It seems the associated hopes and dreams of Christmas are just adding to the problem. Many people are now facing the disappointment of Christmas with the latest change in the restrictions just announced last night. Some people will not be feeling the usual merriment. Some families will be working really hard to give their children a happy, fun-filled Christmas still. And yet the pressure to deliver is immense. For some, they have known for a long time Christmas was going to be just the same, a stressful time of year, but even more so this year. This next carol is a firm favorite, favorite with all ages. Settle yourself back, sit and relax, dim the lights perhaps, even close your eyes and allow the song to wash over you. Give yourself permission to allow the snowy scenes that you will see cover you like a blanket of God's peace. Jesus came as the Prince of Peace, and tonight we can all ask God to give us his peace, to face all that's going on around us and also within us. Silent night.
next item is a little bit different. Um, I'm pretty confident that you have never heard this before. We have a friend that we met through the Northumbria community, which has their mother house just up in Felton, about seven miles from here. And he is a Scottish folk singer and songwriter. And this Christmas, he wrote the poem we're about to hear. He's called Bill Adair. And he very kindly recorded it for us. So we not only have his super poem, but also his lovely accent. And Ian has put some super vis visuals to it too, especially for this evening's service. So I, I hope you enjoy this. The stable was warm and the stable was dry. The night was so cold when a robin flew by. Is there shelter, she asked, from the fierce winter roar? Come in, said the stable. There is room for one more. The robin flew in and was perched in the hay when a hungry young field mouse was passing that way. Do you happen to have any scraps in your store? Come in, said the stable. There is room for one more. As the field mouse sat nibbling a stray ear of wheat, a lost, lonely fox staggered in from the street. He looked worn out and haggard as he stood in the door. Come in, said the stable. There is room for one more. To the warmth of the stable, while the fox rested there, from across the wide valley there came a brown hare. Her back leg was bleeding. She was hungry and sore. Come in, said the stable. There is room for one more. Came a cat with her kittens who were left in the snow, then a bitch and her litter who had nowhere to go. A cow and her calf wandered in from the cold, and a ewe with her lamb who had strayed from their fold. The birds flew from the forest and up from the glen, the chaffinch and sparrow, the blackbird and wren. But no matter how many would come to the door, the stable said, Welcome, there is room for one more. Till an old, weary donkey stood waiting outside. We've had such a long journey and have nowhere to bide. From his ears to his tail he was covered in hoar. Come in, said the stable, there is room for one more. Then into the stable he carried his load, the load he had guarded along Bethlehem's road. My lady must rest now, her baby is due. Come in, said the stable. We've been waiting for you. What did the stable offer? Space. There was always room for one more. And this poem tells us something about God, who always has room for one more. He's always willing to forgive, always welcomes another into his love, he gives us space to grow in understanding, to be enlarged in our capacity to trust, to expect more of God, to ask more from him. Tonight, I want to ask you if you'll accept his offer of space and come in this Christmas time. Will you make space for him tonight, whatever is going on in your life? It's so easy to let God be squeezed out at Christmas time, to find it all happened so quickly. We missed it in the midst of the food and the presents and the relaxing. Our next carol is by somebody that we're very fond of here, Gareth Davies Jones. I'm sorry, I shouldn't do that. Anybody who's Welsh, I'm really sorry. And he's Irish, which is even worse. <laughs> So, but um, we've had him in concert here, literally here at this time of year, um, a couple of times now. And here he's going to sing in the bleak midwinter, the bleak midwinter, which is tomorrow, of course, the 21st of December. My favorite carol, I think, and the favorite verse is in this carol. What can I give him poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. 
If I were a wise man, I would do my part. But what I can, I give him. I give my heart. This is the vital message of Christmas. Jesus came to the earth, and many people ignored him, didn't believe in him. Yet he still comes again and again, and he asks us to make room for him in our hearts, to love him and to receive the love he is offering. What better time than Christmas to give God your response to his love? So we listen to Gareth singing in the bleak midwinter. gospel. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flock by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. 
This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So the angels came and told the news to the poor shepherds, not to the so-called rich or the important, not to Herod, but to the shepherds, and what a show the angels put on. And what was their message? Peace on earth, goodwill to all people. This year, of all years, we need to hear that message of peace, don't we? I've never noticed until this year the line that says, and still their heavenly music floats o'er the weary world. Isn't that what we're feeling like this year? And here is the good news that the angels bring. We know, we can know that peace tonight. So we're going to hear it came upon a midnight clear. comes to end last but not least the wise men and Jane's going to read it for us thank you Matthew 2 verses 1b to 11 about that time some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking where is the newborn king of the Jews 
We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you who will be shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say Ian and I have listened to hundreds of carols to try and find different versions to make uh, this evening interesting and uh, not just all the same sorts. And this next one is um, one example of that. We're going to hear the carol that tells of the wise man's journey to find the baby king, the first Noel. And this is a girl group that I've not come across before, but I hope you enjoy it. So 
Whew. Not only do you have to have long hair and a fantastic voice, you also have to have perfect teeth to sing in that group, I think. But beautiful. If you've um, done any singing in choirs before, I think you will have enjoyed the harmonies uh, in that. We're just about at the end of our evening, and we're going to share a video with you now, which is, is a carol. Um, it pulls together the whole story. And if you watch carefully, uh, near the beginning, you'll see somebody hold up a Christmas ornament, uh, a metal cut-out ornament. And uh, it gives shape, literally, to the rest of the story. Uh, it's repeated in a children's nativity. It's then acted by grown-ups. And at the very end, watch out for the angels and the shape that we are left with um, as they gather. This is Angels from the Realms of Glory. And a final blessing. 
May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas time. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all and all those you love and miss now and always. Amen. And we end with a very traditional carol for a carol service, Hark the Herald, Angels Sing.